a sea would only force it to deepen its military buildup there. The warning came after a United States Navy destroyer, the John McCain, operations near contested islands and reefs across the South China Sea are meant to show that the United States does not accept that China or any other claimant can legally challenge an American naval presence in the area. But in separate statements, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of National Defense accused the United States of stirring regional conflict and suggested that such operations bolstered China's case for building military facilities across the sea to defend its claim territory. Vietnam, the Philippines and other governments also claim islands and adjacent waters in the sea. We strongly urge the United States to immediately mend its ways and end the legal provocations in the name of so-called freedom of navigation, Senior Colonel Wu Jin, a spokesman for the Chinese Ministry of Defense, said on its website on Friday. The American military provocation will only induce the Chinese military to further build up various defensive capacities. The loud, swift denunciations by the Chinese government stood in contrast to its muted public response to tensions over North Korea. Pyongyang vowed this week to fire missiles near Guam, an American territory, after President Trump warned of unprecedented fire and fury if it threatened the United States. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has not commented about the escalating crisis on its website, and its regular news briefings are in summer recess. Chinese leaders have also not commented publicly. The United States and its regional allies have accused Beijing of inflaming tensions in the South China Sea by expanding islands and reefs into military installations, refusing multilateral negotiations over overlapping territorial claims and spurning a ruling last year from an international tribunal that rejected the legality of China's claims to much of the sea. Mischief Reef is controlled by China but also claimed by the Philippines, Vietnam and Taiwan. China has used dredged sand to expand the original reef into an artificial island big enough to hold an airstrip. Under international law, countries can claim territorial sea up to 12 nautical miles from islands under their sovereignty. But low outcrops and reefs do not create such a right, nor do artificial islands built on them. The passage by the John S. McCain sent the implicit signal that the United States does not accept any territorial sea claims around Mischief Reef, regardless of who claims sovereignty. Thank you. possibility being put forth tonight by a key member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Trump told him there will be war with North Korea. Look at what's happening on the ground. U.S. troops, jets, various forces are arriving to South Korea in an endless stream. Anti-air missile systems are blanketing the airspace and there are endless war games, simulations, exercises all around uh, North Korea carried out by the United States, its allies and, uh, and South Korea. This isn't about scaring North Korea. That can't be done. This is about putting all the pieces into place so that when the final go order comes, everybody's ready. After all, Donald Trump promised to deal with North Korea. Didn't say we'll handle North Korea. It'll be a war uh, more serious in terms of human suffering than anything we have seen since 1953. It would be a serious uh, it would be a catastrophic war. Kim Jong-un has a million-man army and has bolstered his infantry and artillery near the DMZ. The Pentagon says much of those forces are in underground bunkers. There are about 28,000 U.S. troops in the region, but some studies project tens of thousands of people killed in the first couple of days. He's ready for war and settled on a battle plan. 
Uh, the gears are now in motion, and what Senator Lindsey Graham says is, you know, it only goes to reinforce that. If millions have to die, so be it. The US has carried out another successful test of an intercontinental ballistic missile. The United States has successfully test launched an unarmed Minuteman 3 missile. Guy is reporting highly unusual activity near the coast of North Korea. The Defense Department says that they have evidence of an ejection test by a North Korean submarine. Now one senator is claiming war with North Korea may be inevitable. Japan, South Korea, China would all be in the crosshairs of a war if we started one with North Korea. 10 million people in Seoul, 35 miles from the DMZ. We have more than 25 million people in the Seoul metro area. And the fact is, is if there is war, there will not be thousands of people who will die. There will be tens, potentially hundreds of thousands. So let's be clear about the numbers if we're going to go down that path. Peace. What you need is the nuclear weapon itself. You could actually have a launching space that's just off the West Coast. You could literally hit any city in America. Mm. And that really is the legitimate point that has to be addressed here and what that means to what Kim is actually doing in North Korea right now a dozen nuclear devices that they have. Are any of those small enough to actually put them on the end of a missile right now? Probably not. Is the delivery system close? I said at the beginning of this, we have 25 million people within 35 miles of that border. This could be a massive annihilation like we have never seen in the history of the world. Kim will do is this. He has no intention of dying alone. So if he's going to go down, he is going to take as many people with him, and we need to know that. That's part of the calculus. 35 Joint Strike Fighters. The U.S. Air Force also has its largest combat wing stationed at Kadena Air Base, Okinawa, Japan, including multiple F-15 squadrons. North Korea, backed into a corner with conventional air force, continues to rely on its nuclear weapons program to threaten the coalition forces in the Pacific. North Korea has a reported 30-60 nuclear warheads and advancing ballistic missile capabilities, such as the two-stage Hwasong-14 that launched twice in July. The U.S. response is to line the country's border with F-35 Joint Strike Fighters and other advanced aircraft, ships, and stations enough conventional weaponry to overwhelm North Korea. The reliability of military deterrence is going to be put to the test in the Pacific. Let's hope it holds. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said recently it would be game on if North Korea were to fire a missile at the United States or its allies, but how fast things would happen is not so clear. A leading expert in missile defense told Fox News there would not be much time to decide to shoot down a North Korean missile. Keep in mind the entire flight time from North Korea to the United States is well a signature that is quickly picked up by U.S. military spy satellites. Almost immediately the information is transferred to the North American Aerospace Defense Command, better known as NORAD, as well as the U.S. Strategic Command. Its interceptor missiles will be housed in silos between two U.S. Air Force bases in Alaska and California. The last two tests of the ground-based interceptors have been successful despite a spotty track record previously. I'm very confident dot that this system can and will defend a homeland if attacked said the former head of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, Vice Admiral James D. Siring. But even this new technology needs improving. Today's kill vehicle from the interceptor missiles dates back to the 1990s, according to Karago. To protect South Korea and the U.S. territory of Guam, the U.S. military has deployed the Fed anti-ballistic missile system. Right now that terminal high-altitude area defense is only operated by the United States military, but there are only a few systems available to deploy. The United States has only about five or six bad batteries for the world, said Karako. The United Arab Emirates has two bad batteries and the Saudis have announced they will be purchasing seven batteries, Karako said. That is a perfect 15 for 15 over its lifetime in controlled tests to destroy short or medium range ballistic missiles, including two recent tests from Kodiak, Alaska which shot down ballistic missiles over the Pacific. That missiles intercept ballistic missiles when they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. But Karako says the Fed battery currently deployed to South Korea is only finite. 
that will not protect the 25 million people living in and around Seoul, but it will buy the military time to strike back, according to Karago. North Korea has hundreds of missiles, but the battery is not there to defend the entire peninsula, said Karago, T, according to the U.S. Navy. Separately, a ballistic missile defense warship will always be on alert near Japan. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis will join the President and the rest of the cabinet along with their families at Camp David this weekend. And on Friday, a U.S. Navy official confirmed that four warships had joined the USS Ronald Reagan at sea for a routine patrol, just a month after the aircraft carrier's month-long maintenance period in Japan. The official says that two of the four warships are ballistic missile defense ships capable of shooting down North Korean missiles. The four warships carry more than 100 Tomahawk cruise missiles among them. Ahead of a meeting with Kuwaiti Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister Sheikh Mohammed it would happen if North Korea fired a missile at the United States or threatened any allies this weekend. We'll deal with it, he replied.